further ado, I'm going to introduce Neil from a company called Velocity Community, and he's here with an e-bike. Hi, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to speak loudly and very quickly, and let's go for a ride. So what happens when you take a 200-year-old piece of technology called a bicycle and combine it with a 21st century state-of-the-art technology, including a powerful direct drive motor that has no moving parts, a high-density lithium-ion battery, hydraulic disc brake systems, and a built-in communication system that lets you charge your USB devices and control every function of the bicycle, including GPS tracking and the ability to lock and unlock your bike from your phone. What you get is a legitimate short-range alternative that allows you to leave your car at home, get on a bike, and commute to work. This bike is capable of traveling at 28 miles an hour with very little effort for up to 90 miles. Can I hack it up to 45 or 50? <laughs> <laughs> we can take that offline. If you live 15 or 20 miles or closer to work, which about 85% of the people in the United States do, leave the car at home, you'll get to work healthier, happier, and probably quicker if you live in certain areas of the San Francisco Bay Area. Now, take that and combine it with a sales and distribution model that's 75 years old called the Independent Bike Dealership and turn it on its head and call on CEOs, senior HR and facilities management and position yourself as a health and wellness benefits program that's also environmentally responsible by allowing your company to lower their carbon footprint by getting cars off the road. Then provide a turnkey education system to all employees that involves emails, posters, signage, even bikes on display in public areas and cafeterias. All culminating in the ability to bring a complete mobile showroom to the corporate campus with 15 or 20 bikes to allow every employee to be able to learn about, ask questions about, and experience what an e-bike is all about. It's tough to understand it until you get on and pet it. Okay. Now, once that happens, we allow employees and companies to be able to purchase the device. We then provide free delivery of an e-bike anywhere in the San Francisco Bay Area. We provide free 12 months of roadside assistance. We provide free pickup and delivery for warranty service on the bikes. And that's all provided as part of our ongoing service, okay? Now, let's add one more thing to that. We call on companies day in and day out. We have no retail establishment. We are what's called the corporate mobile pop-up for short-range community. The only way to sell an e-bike in this country is to let people get on it. It's what we call bus on bikes. So we have a program that's designed to take the bicycle out of the bike store into the corporate marketplace to allow people to experience what short-range alternatives are available for getting to and from work. Now, with that said, let me explain another interesting part of our mind. We are a bootstrap startup. I've been in the high-tech industry for about 30 years, so I've been rounding around everything from startups to working as a senior executive for, for large public companies. We have no warehouse. We have no retail establishment. We have no inventory. We have no parts, no accessories. We have no employees. We have no high cap costs. Our fixed costs are a few hundred dollars a month. And those include paying for a Shopify e-commerce site, online accounting software, liability insurance, and the things that we need in order to be able to grow our business. Our goal is to sell a thousand bikes to corporations in the San Francisco Bay Area, and then duplicate that model in every major market in North America. We will put more bus on bikes and sell more bicycles than all the retailers in the Bay Area combined. We have, just today, four bikes, including this one. Outside, you can go outside, Put a helmet on, you can get on, you can see what it's like. There are no throttles on these bikes. We add power to your pedestal. They look and they feel 
just like a bicycle. But at 25 to 30 miles an hour, for up to 90 miles, you can get to work very, very quickly. The other thing is that we're also a lot of fun. So that is my five minute presentation. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you. Lots of time. How much? Life starts seven. We have all kinds of bikes, and all of them are uh, different price ranges. We have a folding bike, so if you if you get off a bar, you need to get to work. Ferry, you need to get to work. You want to carry the bike upstairs because these are heavy. That bike starts at seventeen hundred dollars and folds up. We have bikes that go up to ten thousand dollars. They have one kilowatt batteries. The range is up to one hundred and twenty miles, and they have electronic shifting which means they don't have traditional gears. They simply have a button on the handlebar that allows you to simply push in order to be able to shift. Sorry, next question. How do you charge it? This bike, all the bikes you can charge the battery on the bike. They all have charging ports. This one happens to have a magnetic charging port like a Macintosh, like a MacBook. You just plug it in. I also open the battery compartment, and you can just pull the battery and charge it at home or at your desktop. Standard one time. By the way, yes. It's an interesting service model. Um, the bikes you're not making; someone else is making them. You're reselling them. There's a we service are, model there. Yes, we spent oh about 18 months looking at all the e-bikes in the world. And the two companies that we represent are one is a German company called AB, and the other one is a Swiss company, which is this company called Stromer. And they make e-bikes from the ground up. So everything, the tires. These are puncture-proof tires. Everything about the bikes from the ground up is designed to be used every single day and to be pounded on. So, not every manufacturer makes the durability and the range of the performance that we're looking for. Now, eventually, when we're operating in multiple markets across the country, we will probably take a look at designing our own brand, but that's not the road. Yes, sir. How do you manage the 24 by 7 roadside assistance? Do you have a deal with AAA or something like that? Uh, we have a company, uh, it's like AAA, it's a third party insurance company, and they provide bicycle insurance. There is a fee for it. We include it in the uh, price of the bike, and that's something that we pay for because it's a benefit that allows us to be able to differentiate our service from other, from other companies. Yes, sir. From what I understand, it's totally mature in Europe and, other, and Asia. I mean, can you explain a little bit? So let me, let me give you an example. Uh, in, the, in the world of high tech, because I was in high tech, I managed, uh, I made this zip business, for example, and we cared about the U.S., we cared about Europe, we didn't really care about Asia, it was a tertiary market. In the bicycle industry, Asia is the biggest market, 30 million bikes sold. Secondary market is Europe, 10 million bikes sold. In the United States, if you buy one, we'll at least have one sale in the United States. <laughs> So it is a tertiary market. 60 to 70 percent of all bikes sold in about five countries in Europe are e-bikes. But those bicycles are actively being run all over the world, except for the brand new in this country. They're being run all over. There's 30, there's 30 million well, bikes in Asia. You can talk about the fact that it's mature technology. It's not your technology. It's, it's already running in many places. Oh yeah, yeah. There's 30 million e-bikes sold in Asia. There's 10 million sold in Europe. And there's a few thousand sold in the United States. So, the way in which to sell these products is to take them directly to the companies that can benefit the most. So, we are literally a corporate pop up. And we, you know, as Bootstrap, we uh, try and preserve cash. Um, and so far, it's been a very successful model. Last week, we were at Semantic and Facebook. Uh, this week, we're doing uh, tech meetups. So, we're here. Tomorrow we're at Santa Cruz Tech Meetup. Next week we're at Xilinx. Anybody know Xilinx? Yeah. And a small little company off of 101 called Oracle. So it's an interesting business model. These are very interesting products. You gotta get on one. People say, how does it work? Or it's just like a bicycle. We apply power to the pedal stroke. There are cadence and torque sensors that sense your rotation and the pressure you're applying to the pedal, and adds power to your pedal stroke. And there's a controller on all of them that allows you to turn the power up or turn the power down, or if you want to get a workout, you can just simply turn the power off, and now you're just pedaling a heavy bike. All right, you know, that's all the time we have. Is there a website that you want to share with folks?